If you've been playing PlayStation since the days of the PlayStation 3, you have for certain had one of these pop on screen. This is a trophy. You did whatever task this trophy wanted for it to unlock. Trophies were Sony's answer to achievements. Microsoft introduced these in 2005 with the launch of the Xbox 360. Achievements add to a player's gamer score. It could be compared with others and be used as bragging rights. While trophies and achievements are virtually the same thing and ultimately mean nothing, trophies stood out thanks to the legendary Platinum Trophy. Unlock all main trophies and the Platinum Trophy will pop. It's the perfect award to show that you did just about everything the game wanted you to do. Ultimately, trophies are a great way of diving further into a game. Finding all the collectibles, facing challenges you might otherwise ignore, trophies can make a player fully play a game to completion, something they may not have done if trophies weren't around. The trophy system was introduced in 2008 on the PlayStation 3, and later became mandated in 2009. Ever since, trophies have appeared on every console since, even on the PlayStation Vita. Originally, it was fuller, higher-priced games that included the Platinum, while smaller releases on the PlayStation Store didn't and had less trophies to unlock. But these days, Sony is a bit less restrictive on what games require Platinum and what doesn't. I've been trophy hunting since I first got my PlayStation 3 in 2009. My very first Platinum was Tomb Raider Underworld, and being a Tomb Raider fan, it's a milestone I'm super proud to have. Since then, I've amassed over 480 Platinum trophies. I've played games I've loved, games that challenged me, and super easy games that are pretty much a free Platinum and a waste of time. There are Platinum trophies I'm proud of having like Destruction All-Stars, Mirror's Edge, and Fantavision 22X. And then Platinum trophies I've tortured myself through like Barbie and her sister's Puppy Rescue, and Monster High New Ghoul in School. Over the years, I've slowed down my trophy hunting. I still love to get trophies, but it's not as much of a priority as it used to be. Between life getting busy and focusing on making videos, that means less time gaming like I used to. There was a point trophy hunting became addicting. Building up your trophy cabinet, getting as many Platinums as possible, there's a rush to it. An accomplishment that fulfills you for a short while. Watching that Platinum pop on screen after a hard grind. It's like nothing beats that feeling and you just want more. It's consuming, I had to earn a trophy every day, multiple Platinums a week. Spending money on easy games I didn't enjoy or even care for. The joy of gaming was just gone. Thankfully, I was able to step back and enjoy these games for what they are. Which leads me to the trophy hunting community. We may be a small fraction of like-minded players, but with sites like PSM Profiles, PlayStationTrophies.org, and True Trophies, if you're interested in trophy hunting and sharing this interest, you aren't alone. These websites hold useful trophy guides for so many games and can help you plan ahead. But like any community, there's both the good and the bad. What's most interesting is that everyone has a different way of going about trophies and how they want their profiles to look. For some, they need to have as close to a 100% completed profile as possible. If a game later comes out with DLC trophies, that trophy list is no longer completed and brings down a profile's average score. If a game continuously has DLC trophies like Warframe or Dead by Daylight, it's an issue. It could be a year until a game gets more content like God of War Ragnarok or Returnal. It makes people question if they should keep a game for future content, but then adds frustration if a game does. It's why many trophy hunters have alternate accounts. They can play games with unobtainable trophies if the online server shut down or there's a glitch that prevents a trophy from popping. And none of this will affect their main profile. For me, my profile represents my gaming history. It's a reflection of the games I enjoyed, the games I tried but could never get into, and everything in between. I have games I'll never get the Platinum to like Street Fighter V, and I'm okay with having an incomplete trophy list. I have games where the online server shutdowns made certain trophies unobtainable, like Mod Nation Racers, DJ Hero 2, and 007 Bloodstone. Games I wish I could complete, but I can't. People miss out on getting online trophies for whatever reason. 
life happens, you get into a game long after the fact, and unless you have those trophies, you'll never get the platinum. Some people try to create petitions to reopen servers, and while it is a valiant effort, it's never going to go far. Most companies don't care. Legacy consoles like the PlayStation 3 and the Vita aren't a focus anymore, and companies can't make a ton of money off of them. It leads to people wanting those online trophies to be replaced. There have been cases of developers altering trophies that can't be earned, but it doesn't happen often. Though again, you'll never see this for older legacy consoles. Then we get to the hot topic of deleting trophies. For some reason, this is an argument that goes further than it should. PlayStation doesn't allow this. Deleting trophies sounds good in theory, but doesn't really make sense. You earn a trophy and it's on your profile. If people could delete trophies, it would defeat the whole purpose of the trophy system. People could tailor trophy lists to fit their own criteria. If I worked for a trophy and earned it, but you don't have it and can delete it, that doesn't really add up, does it? While online trophies are a pain, boosting sessions on these websites make them easier. I've had sessions where people are super friendly and helpful, and others where they are controlling and leave after they get what they want. It's the chance you take, but often better than grinding it out. I've seen issues with boosting sessions where if a random person joins with the intention of simply playing the game, people get angry and want to attack that player to get them to leave. I know it's frustrating, but we as trophy hunters aren't playing the game correctly and it's not fair to take it out on this random person. Some people politely send messages telling them of the situation, but too many times I've seen this go the other way, and it shouldn't be like that. When it comes to getting that platinum trophy, there are difficult, more rewarding games, and then there are easier games. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to play an easy game. Over the years in the community, the idea of what's an easy platinum has changed over time. When it came to the PlayStation 3, games like Terminator Salvation and Hannah Montana the movie were frowned upon because of how easy they were. This changed with the PlayStation 4. We had games from a publisher called Radaleka. They published and ported solid actual games. But the trophy list was pretty straightforward and easy to do without completing the game. None of that compares to the continuous onslaught of crappy, cheap, and quick platinum games. You are literally paying for a platinum trophy. And these games are everywhere. Reskinned as something new, but the gameplay is always the same. Maybe you've heard of the jumping bagel, the jumping fries, the jumping chocolate, the jumping coffee, or its spin-off series, the jumping tofu turbo, the jumping pumpkin turbo, and so many others. It's never ending and there are tons of games like these. It's a major problem on the PlayStation Store. Sony has taken some action, but hasn't eliminated the entire issue, and these games are still released weekly. It's a major issue for trophy hunters. Sure, it's an easy platinum, and you can stack hundreds of these on your profile, but that affects leaderboards and rankings on these websites. Someone can have a profile of actual real platinums they had to work for, but years of that progress can be for nothing if someone pays for a number of these games. With the release of the PlayStation 5, we've seen cross-generation games and both releases have their own trophy list. With this, there's the ability to import your save and auto-pop trophies, possibly giving you a free platinum. But not all games do this. Games take a lot of time already, and if I can get a free platinum from doing the work on one version, why not? But not everyone agrees. It's like the cheap games. When you auto-pop a platinum, it alters the leaderboards and rankings. Some would rather put the effort in and play the game again. Auto-popping is great, but I don't recommend striving to do it. Don't play the PlayStation 4 version when there's a better version of the game on the PlayStation 5. This is something I had to learn when I played Guardians of the Galaxy first on PS4 instead of the PS5. The game does not look the best on the PlayStation 4, so when I jumped onto the PS5 to get that Platinum, the game was breathtaking. But my first impression of it wasn't on the correct console, and I really wish it was. In general, sometimes I think trophy hunters forget that there is a larger audience outside of trophy hunting. 
I know the frustration that comes with server shutdowns, additional DLC, earning trophies that you regret later, the pressure of feeling like you have to earn every trophy after starting a game. I also feel like as trophy hunters, sometimes we lose the simple enjoyment of playing games. I'm reminded of this when I play the Nintendo Switch or other consoles that never had trophies or achievements. And it's nice to not have that thought in your head when starting a game. I can go in, not worry about missing a trophy that would set me back, and play the game for what it is. It's like a time I was in a boosting session. Someone dug into my trophy list, took a screenshot of a game that was difficult to get a platinum, shared it in the discussion, and told me good luck. While my trophy list can be seen by anyone, somehow it felt like an invasion of privacy. Something unneeded to be said at a time when the focus was elsewhere, and is everything I feel is wrong with trophy hunting. Even with some negativity, the concept of trophy hunting is fascinating. To the average person, they don't care much for trophies, and if they saw a profile like mine, they would either be amazed or simply think I have no life. Meanwhile, you have YouTube channels dedicated to the art of trophy hunting, creating visual guides for others to follow, challenging themselves to get as many Platinums as possible in a short amount of time, and going above and beyond to achieve near-impossible ultra-rare Platinums. Trophies add replayability to games and makes you participate in ways you may not have done before. Ultimately, trophy hunting is whatever you make of it. It depends on how far you want to go. Something that seems so simple to some has a whole other meaning to others. Some people are more extreme, some are more lenient, but it's your profile, and you dictate how you want to use it. Let me know your thoughts on trophy hunting in the comments below. Are you a trophy hunter? How extreme do you go? Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified about future content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.